Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show, where we help you make the wisest and most profitable decisions. My name is Dr. Gleb Cipurski. I'm the CEO of Disaster Avoidance Experts, the future work consultancy that sponsors the Wise Decision Maker Show. And today I'm joined by Dr. Mark Ma. Mark, can you please introduce yourself and share a little bit about what you do? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Mark Ma. I'm an associate professor of business administration at the University of Pittsburgh. I teach broad issues about corporate financial performance, and also I have published more than 10 articles in leading business research journals about corporate financial performance and a lot of uh, complex corporate issues. Excellent. And you recently are coming out with a new paper. It hasn't been peer-reviewed yet, but it's quite interesting, and you thank you for sending it to me, sharing that corporate performance doesn't improve after return to office policies. So please share a little bit more about what you found. Yes, thank you uh, for being interested in our study. So clearly return to office mandates will affect millions of people in this nation alone, billions of people <laughs> all around the world. So this is a big social issue and it's very, very important that we have some very solid analysis about why firms want to do it and what are the consequences of return to office mm -hmm. mandates before like firms further move on and recent surveys suggest that managers actually do not really have a good understanding about the consequences of return to office mandates so they are making decisions based on their intuitions based on what they observe by uh, other people are doing all right so that's not the best practice not mm -hmm. for not for the firm not for the society yeah. So we decided to do this analysis to, to understand the determinants and the consequences of return to office mandates. So <clears throat> we look at both why these firms want to uh, return to office and also uh, what are the consequences to the firm and also to the employees. Mm -hmm. All right, so about the first part, the determinants, why these firms want to return to office. So we closely observe in, like online posts, like there are millions of posts. So we are this with thousands of posts from diff employees from different different pro profession from different industries, and mm -hmm. then we have clearly observed the three possible ex ex explanation that people kind of mm -hmm. agree on. So the first one is the uh, explanation provided by managers. So the manager's argument is people are being lazy at home. And also working from home is bad for team building. So as a result, we need to call employees back to office. As a result, employee performance will improve, firm performance will improve, and the firm value will improve. So that's their argument. Yep. But is that true or not? And let's, before I talk about our results, let's think about this. So the first argument is some people are more lazy, like, no, no, they really didn't say some. They just say people working from home are more lazy. And I cannot deny the possibility that some people are more lazy at home, but is that really the majority of all workers? I really doubt that. And are you actually being more productive in the office? I'm really not sure based on my experience. Hmm. If you are working in an office with more than 10 people, with a lot of people, there could be very bad politics, which affects everyone. And sure. that could it's, not be only, it's not only that, to be clear, uh, as we bo both know, it's not simply politics. There's been quite a bit of research, which you cite in your paper, showing that there's definitely different value of working remotely. Exactly. And uh, in fact, one paper for people who are as economists show that economists, for example, are much, much more productive when they're working from home than when they're working from the office. There's been similar research showing programmers, whereas more people who are more or less skilled, more blue collar positions, let's say like call service workers, they may be less productive when they're working from home. So there's complex and nuanced findings on productivity when people are working remote. Exactly, exactly. That's absolutely true, but I'm just trying to say that when you are trying, to, sometimes it's very difficult for you to focus on, on your most important task when you are working in an office where people yeah. are talking to each other, chit-chatting, talking to each other, and other people trying to 
uh, like trying just trying to talk to you to waste some time, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So so it's really not clear whether people are more productive or not. So there are research before the pandemic which actually provide very mixed evidence. Some studies suggest that people are more productive in the office. Mm -hmm. Some studies suggest the otherwise. However, these studies are from the period before the pandemic. And during that time period, most people do not have experience with working from home. And for most people, they are used to getting up in the morning and go to their office. And they do not complain about commuting, right? They do not complain about commuting so much. And now, after the pandemic, people's experience and knowledge has completely been updated. Mm -hmm. Most yeah. people know that they could work efficiently at home. Mm -hmm. So as a result, if they are being forced back to the office based on the re reason that they are being lazy at home, these mm -hmm. people will be really unsatisfied with their mm -hmm. job and also their management, especially those high performing employees. Mm -hmm. So, so as a result, that if these high performing employees are unhappy, as a result, their productivity could actually decline. And over the long term, they will start thinking about finding other jobs for themselves. Mm -hmm. So, so as a result, we think it's really unclear ex ante what will happen after return to office mandates. All right. Mm -hmm. So, to, to understand this issue, we look at the change in performance before in financial performance, or uh, and also in stock market value before and after mm -hmm. return to office mandates, and we found no significant change. Mm -hmm. So there is no significant change due to this. So that means, let's say that, let's just assume, which I do not think is true, but let's just assume employees are more productive at home, uh, in the office. Let's just assume managers are true. Mm -hmm. But our results would suggest that because when you bring employees back to the office, you need to make extra spendings to pay the parking lot, to pay the office space, and to pay a lot of other expenses. Mm -hmm. The benefits of bringing back the employees to the office is close to zero. That's mm -hmm. what we found. So, so, so that's basically does not support managers' explanation. But another yeah. excuse managers could give is uh, our intent was good. Like mm -hmm. we wanted to improve, even though it does not work out, but our original intent was good. So we further look at whether the intent was really, that, that's mm -hmm. really consistent with our findings or not. So uh, <clears throat> not all managers care about firm value or shareholder value to the same extent, right? So mm -hmm. some managers cares more about the, the value of the firm or the value of shareholders. And especially when they have more ownership of the firm, like they own a lot of the firm, the stock, their wealth, their personal wealth is more closely tied to the firm's value. Mm -hmm. And in that case, the managers will be more likely to adopt value enhancing policies. And so if the intent is really to improve firm value, we would observe more return to office mandates by these managers who have a bigger ownership of the firm. Mm -hmm. and, but we found no association there. So mm -hmm. that's just inconsistent with managers' intent be, being actually to improve firm value. So that's not consistent with the first explanation. And then we'll go on and uh, try to look at the other two possible explanations. So the second possible explanation said by a lot of people online, a lot of different uh, employees online, is that the managers just try to reassert their control over the employees. They feel they have lost their power and control over the employees since the pandemic, especially given a tight market the tight labor market. A lot of employees could have found other high paid jobs which have allowed them to work remotely very easily. Yeah. And the, the managers feel that this is getting out of their control, especially many managers are used to be in a very powerful position. They sure. do not want to hear dissents from their employees, right? So, so they want to get everything back under control. And so we actually found these results consistent with this. That's, hmm. We found the male CEOs and the more powerful CEOs are more likely to uh, in, impose return to office mandates. Uh, I'm not saying all male CEOs are seeking power, sure. but in research, which shows that male CEOs on average are more likely to seek power uh, mm -hmm. relative to female CEOs. All right, mm -hmm. so, and also, if you look at yesterday, I'm not sure whether you read this article that 
yesterday WebMD uh, parent firm made a video yeah. about return to office Mondays. <laughs> and what did they yeah, say in this awesome. video? We are not asking you. We are not negotiating with you and do not mess with us. <laughs> so that's that funny. That's a classic. Uh, that's just another classic example supporting mm -hmm. our funding that these authoritarian managers want employees back to the office. But they need to know that return to office mandates is not a time travel machine that could uh, bring everything back to the <laughs> past before the pandemic. Yeah. Right? So that's not true because people's knowledge, people's understanding of these things has changed. Yes. Even if you bring people back to the office, the old workplace mode, people will not behave the same way because they know they can work efficiently at home. All right, so that's sure. really important for people, yeah. for, for the manager and for the shareholders to know. And Absolutely. in addition to this explanation, we also consider a third explanation. Mm -hmm. so the third explanation is uh, many, many people online says that these managers are trying just to blame the employees as a scapegoat for their poor decision making, which lead to bad performance during the mm -hmm. pandemic. So if you look at Amazon, which is one of the most dramatic uh, case example of return to office mandates, oh, yeah. you know, when did, the, when did the Amazon issue the return to office mandates? So if you look at their stock price, Amazon's stock price benefited from the pandemic initially, around mm -hmm. in, in the year of 2020, but at the end of 2022, it dropped more than 30% mm -hmm. in the last quarter of 2022. And in the first quarter of 2023, they imposed the, the return to office mandate. So mm -hmm. what's happening here is when the firm's stock price is not good, the managers need face very, very big pressure from the investors to provide mm -hmm. a legitimate explanation. And an easy explanation is employees being late hmm. and that's that's just an easy easy scapegoat easy, much easier than all the other explanations and hmm. consistent with this explanation we found firms that has a poor stock price performance in the prior quarter hmm. are more likely to impose return to office mandates so and also we found also interesting we, we found if a firm has more institutional ownership that means a, a bigger chunk of their ownership is owned by the institutional investors, those professional investors who really mm. understand the situation. They are more less likely to have return to office mandates mm. because it's harder for the managers to use this as an excuse to mislead, <laughs> to conceive the investors mm. when the investors are professionals. So that's basically uh, the, the the first part, the like why firms want to mm. uh, it, uh, to impose this return to office mandates. And then about the second part, we first, as I just said, we found there's no change in firm performance and no change in firm stock market value after the return to office mandates. And also we found that employee job satisfaction significantly dropped after return to office mandates. Hmm. So we, we collected employees' Glassdoor reviews and we compare the glass store reviews before and after. We found a significant job right after the return to office announcement. And also we found their ratings of overall job satisfaction, their ratings of work-life balance, their ratings of corporate culture, and their ratings of top management all significantly decrease. So that's basically means the employees do not want this. And mm -hmm. this decline in employee job satisfaction should be taken very, very carefully because managers need to understand this. As I said before, the people who will be most unhappy about this return to office mandates are those people who are performing really good yes. at home. Yeah. And these people will start looking for other jobs. Mm -hmm. And as long as there are still companies who provide remote jobs, it's relatively easier for these high performing mm -hmm. employees to find to fund jobs. So in the long term, yeah. I believe that may like uh, fire back and uh, create a backfire and uh, hurt mm -hmm. the firm's performance in the long term. That yes, makes that's, sense. That's, that's, the, that's our fundings, current fundings. We are mm -hmm. trying to do some follow-up analysis. 
but uh, uh, these are not those are not in the study yet. Yes. Excellent. So let's talk about the scope so that uh, folks understand what the scope is. How long have you followed the firms and saw the consequences of the return to office? Like, what's the timeline here? So we followed firms from the first return to office mandate announcement until the end of 2023. Mm -hmm. So because we want to provide a really timely uh, analysis, so we sure. followed all the way until the last day when we when we, when we write the paper. We followed all mm -hmm. of these return to office mandates covered in news media by mm -hmm. SMP 500 firms. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And it's quite amazing that the first return to office mandate was imposed in the second quarter of 2020. Hmm. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. A couple S&P 500 firm called people back to the office right after the breakout of the COVID pandemic. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. I agree. Now, I want to uh, talk about the sample size. I think you had something like 140 firms that had confirmed the return to office, correct? Yes, we have uh, uh, around that number of firms. Sorry, I do not have exact statistics uh, in front of me, but yes, that's, that sounds correct, yes. Yeah, something like that. And you excluded something like 40-ish, that 43, I believe, that uh, were uncertain and you used the rest as a control to- Yes, we, we excluded, I think it's some, 70 some, some 70 firms or 75 firms uh which so we look at the link the in well sorry we look at the indeed.com on uh, indeed.com mm -hmm. employees could provide information about whether mm -hmm. return to office or whether remote work is an option on their firm so if mm -hmm. return to if return to office is not an option for more than 75 percent of the employees providing information on yes. LinkedIn, we think these firms probably they also have a mandate but they didn't that's not covered by the news. So we excluded those firms from okay. our sample. Mm -hmm. And then you found that, I wanna get a little bit more clarity on the CEO power seeking. So you found that something like, I believe 93% of all S&P firms are led by male CEOs, unfortunately. 70% yes. are left by females. Oh, but but oh. I want to uh, say that so again, not all male CEOs of course. Are, like, are, are the same. Like there are some, but on average, on average male CEOs are, are more, more, like, mm -hmm. more obsessed with power than female, yes. Yes, and I think that's observable. So that's not something that's going to be, there are a number of ways of evaluating power seeking behavior. I'm curious if you used only the, did you evaluate how did you evaluate whether a male CEO was more power seeking versus not? So we look at their compensation structure. So mm -hmm. we basically look at the compensation by the CEO versus other executives. So firms mm -hmm. are required to report their top five executives compensation. Mm -hmm. So if the CEO, the top uh, C executive, which is the CEO's compensation is much higher than all the other executives, that basically means this is a one-man show in the mm -hmm. in, in the company. And that mm -hmm. has been used uh, in the literature. So the man, the, that basically means the CEO do not want to hear different opinions. And, mm -hmm. uh, the, and uh, all the other people must follow his orders. Mm -hmm. Understandable. Okay, yeah, just want to get that information out there so folks under, are aware of it. Now, as we finish up, what are you finding in your follow-up analysis that's not yet in the paper? So uh, that's really so that's what we are trying to do. So we are trying to do what we are trying to say is what employees can do, what employees can do if they want to do uh, they, if they want to have the remote work option. So we want to the next step we are still collecting the data is we want to say whether firms with labor union are less likely to have return to office mandates mm -hmm. because in those firms the managers are more concerned about protests or strikes mm -hmm. by union members. So mm -hmm. maybe employees who are really concerned about losing the remote work opportunity, they should start thinking about forming a uh, labor union. But we have mm -hmm. not done the analysis yet. That's, post, that's the next step. And we want to provide some uh, guidance for employees who actually want to keep their return to office mandates. 
That certainly makes sense. All right. Thank you very much, Mark. This was very helpful. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Glenn. And uh, thank you for the invitation. And thank you to the audience for checking out another episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show. Please make sure to subscribe wherever you checked out the show and leave a review. It helps others discover the show and it helps us improve the show.